Welcome PCS members and friends to our today's uh, PCS IBS seminar. It is a great pleasure to have with us uh, today Professor Nicolas Laflorency, and I would like to invite our scientific host uh, Dario to introduce our speaker. Please, Dario. Yeah, thank you, Dylan. So it's it's really a pleasure to have Nicola today for uh, for our uh, weekly uh, weekly seminar. So let me introduce a bit Nicola Carrier. I mean, he got his PhD in 2004 at the Laboratoire de Physique Théorique in Toulouse. Then uh, he had a few postdoctoral appointments, uh, one in uh, University, of, University of British, uh, British uh, well, in Canada, anyway, and another in Switzerland. I don't... <laughs> British Columbia, um, this is British, British Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, I was not entirely sure, so that's why I stopped it. But okay, British Columbia in Canada and another in Switzerland. And then he came back uh, to France and he started his career in the CNRS, first in Orsay and finally again back in Toulouse. So you are back from to the origin. And he became a director of research uh, in uh, 2020 in Toulouse. Now, uh, Nicolas' research is... Uh, let's say, tailor it to quantum many body systems in general. He is an expert in the disorder systems. And so, in, for example, in many body localization, but also in magnetism uh, and uh, entanglement and also in numerical simulations for strongly correlated materials. And indeed, today is going to give a talk about many body localization and topological order in disordered interacting eyes in Majorana chains. Nicola, I think you can start. Okay, thank you, Dario. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, so it's the morning here in Toulouse, and uh, I guess for most of you, this is the afternoon. So good afternoon. Uh, so yes, I'm going to talk about uh, MBL. So many body localization from now, that will be a shorter MBL. And uh, its relationship with the uh, topological order edge states in uh, the famous example of uh, easing Majorana chains with, uh, in the presence of disorder and interactions. So let me first acknowledge uh, warmly my two collaborators on this, on this project. One is Nicolas Massé here, who was postdoc in Toulouse for two years, and Gabriel Lemarié, uh, who is a CNRS researcher like me uh, in, from Toulouse, but now is uh, in Singapore uh, for a few years. So this is the, um, the outline of the, the story of today. So first of all, I will uh, introduce uh, what I mean by many body localization. Then I will uh, jump to the easy Marana chain and with the, the first very interesting limit, the non-interacting limit. And then I will move to, uh, to, the, to the main results of the seminar with the, the presence of interaction and our recent uh, numerical results. And then I will conclude and uh, open to uh, possible interesting new questions. So what is what we mean by MBL physics? So one of the most studied model for this, uh, for this problem is a one-dimensional uh, system. And here I wrote the, this uh, one-dimensional Hamiltonian, where you have basically three terms. One is the quantum tunneling for electrons. One is the interaction between a nearest neighbor, for example. And the other one is the local potential, which can be site dependent, epsilon i. So the interesting thing with this kind of uh, fermionic model is it, it has some sort of quite generali generality because it can be made exactly equivalent using uh, the so-called jordan digner transformation written here. So this fermion model is formally equivalent to a spin half chain in a magnetic field. And you see the correspondence of the term. So quantum tunneling becomes a spin flip term that you represent here. You see the spin flipping. Uh, the interaction between the fermion becomes uh, easing interaction between the spins and the local potential becomes a magnetic field which can depend on the, on the position. So what is also interesting here is in fermionic language, the particle number is conserved and this in this magnetic language means that the total spin SZ 
is a conserved uh, quantity. Good. So this is, of course, an interacting problem. But let us start from the, 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 the beginning uh, in the situation where instead of having this full interacting Hamiltonian, I put only one particle in the system. So if I have only one particle, of course, the interaction term doesn't uh, play a role. And so I have a single particle here. So this is an extremely well-known problem, okay, which has been, uh, of course, uh, understood first by Anderson. And Anderson, okay, so this is the so-called phenomenon of Anderson localization. So with this non-interacting fermionic Hamiltonian, you can diagonalize it by uh, making a simple linear transformation. So having new fermionic operator B, which are linear combination of the original C operator, such that your free fermion can be written in this simple diagonal form. And here, uh, the interesting physics behind that is in this coefficient phi i m, okay, which are the so-called Anderson orbitals. And in the presence of any finite disorder in the epsilon i, these orbitals will be exponentially localized. Okay, and this is the sketch for you need each... a minus in the exponential. Why? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I will correct that now. Okay, thank you. So this is a sketch of all the M orbitals. <clears throat> okay, one here with each of them having a different localization set. Good. So now, okay, let us go from single to many particles. So what is happening? So if now I stay in the same uh, Anderson basis with this operator B dag and B, writing the interaction in this basis yields this uh, more complicated um, term in the Hamiltonian. So you see you have uh, something which depends on four indices with four fermion terms, okay? And so looking at that, we can, uh, here it's first uh, sort of hand-waving argument to, to feel what interactions uh, we bring to the problem. So from that, we see that we understand that this term will certainly favor the localization on top of this uh, non-interacting uh, localized uh, inter insulator, Anderson insulator, because this term V, J, K, L, M can act at any distance, okay, between the orbitals. So this was, <coughs> this, is, this was something during the 80s and 90s, which has been understood by uh, a bunch of uh, very clever people here. And so on general grounds, they, they basically uh, proposed this kind of uh, diagram in the plane interaction disorder, <coughs> meaning that we expect that the Anderson insulator here on the, on the, on the bottom, in the absence of interaction can be either in the presence of interaction delocal, delocalized or normal, let's say metal that we call ergodic phase, or if this order is strong enough, we can, we can have still uh, an insulator in the presence of interaction and this would be called a many body localized uh, shield, okay? And we expect a transition in between. So this is a general picture. Uh, then, okay, so most of this work uh, that I cited here are of course analytical calculations. And then uh, I would say 2010 uh, came the first, uh, the first uh, numerical uh, simulation, numerical uh, check of, of such, uh, such uh, arguments. And this 2010, 2020, this is what I call it, a very fruitful and prolific decade. Um, one of the first uh, important uh, work came from, uh, from Princeton with uh, Pal and Hughes and also Organisian. And I think uh, this is one of the first numerical investigation of this problem. And so they took this simple Heisenberg spin chain, okay? So which is uh, in the same you know, class than the, 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 the the interacting fermion that I, that I presented before, 
with a random magnetic field along the z-axis, okay? And here, the first thing they did was to study the spectral statistics through the gap ratio, which is the ratio between adjacent gap in the, in the many body spectrum, very high in the, at high energy in the spectrum. So this gap ratio as a function of the disorder strengths. And they could identify clearly that there is a spectral transition in this problem, depending on how big is the, 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 the window in which the random field is taken. Okay, between uh, a random matrix theory result, which signal a delocalized phase, and the Poisson statistics at strong disorder, which signal a many body localized phase. Okay, and they could identify a clear abrupt transition. Uh, so that was for the eigenstate. Then a few years after came a very interesting work regarding uh, dynamics by Bardarsson, Polman, and Moore. And this work is very impressive because it can make uh, uh, a drastic uh, distinction between Anderson and MBL phase, even for a very, very, very small interaction strength. So what they did here was starting from a product state without entanglement, they make a quench, starting from that, they put the interacting Hamiltonian and they look how the entanglement entropy as growth with time. So it grows and after some, some transient behavior, either if there is no interaction, it entanglement entropy would saturate at infinite time or for any finite interaction, even like 1%, very, very, very small, the green, the green symbols, they found a very slow, but no saturation, but logarithmic growth of the entanglement entropy. So this is really a smoking gun for, for MBL regime, this slow and bounded, uh, logarithmic growth for the entanglement entropy. And this was also found by in this group. So a nice interpretation of this MBL phase came with uh, the work of Serbin, Papic, and Abani, where they, uh, they proposed that MBL phase has some integrability. And this is provided you, you, you know a simple uh, quasi-local unitary transformation, you coming from uh, trans transforming the original spins onto a new degrees of freedom, they found that the MBN Hamiltonian is equivalent to this kind of classical easing Hamiltonian provided that your expansion between the, 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 the so the interaction between the spin can be at any range and uh, any, uh, any body, in fact. But still, if you have that, this is indeed integrable. This is a, so this is a sort of a classical view uh, for, this, uh, for this MBL phase, which, which is uh, in that respect integrable. Um, then we, we, end, we came in the, into the, this, uh, this, uh, this game with uh, David Luiz, who was, who was postdoc uh, with us in Toulouse, and Fabien Allais. And so building on new numerical method, the so-called shift inverts diagonalization, we could reach uh, 22, 24 spins. And more importantly, we could make diagonalization in an energy resolved way, which, is, which means here, epsilon, this is the energy density of the ground state. So the ground state is here, zero, and the top state is here. And so we could find as a function of energy in the energy disorder diagram, that the transition between ergodic, delocalized, and MBL uh, is not a straight line. There is, a, there is an edge like this. So there is an energy dependent critical disorder separating the two, uh, the two regime for the random field Heisenberg chain. Roughly at the same time came the first um, experimental uh, observation for many body localization. So that was not precisely for the pure random uh, model for the quasi, uh, that was a quasi periodic Aubry Andre interacting uh, model of Fermat's. But uh, here they could, they could clearly identify that when disorder delta is increased, the imbalance, which is uh, an estimate for uh, how the system uh, retain the memory of an initial state, for example, this charge density wave as an initial state, 
how this memory remain a, a long time. And indeed, when disorder is strong enough, they got that this imbalance uh, persists at long time. Couldn't, it's couldn't all say one if. dimensional? It's all in one dimension? So here, yeah, it's one dimension. So all what I said for the moment is for one dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here also this experiment, this is for one dimension. Yeah. There are a few experiments now for 2G, which are, I think they are still under discussion to, to if this is really MBA or not, but it's okay. So, so here today, I will mostly focus on one dimensional system. Yeah. Um, so another nice experiment was in a different setup for using uh, superconducting qubits in the group of uh, Roshan uh, in California. And they observe, nicely observed uh, the same mobility age as we, uh, we, we did observe uh, using, uh, using numerical, numerical simulations. Here, this is basically the same, uh, the same uh, plot, energy density, disorder strength, and so they have like here an ergodic regime. Uh -huh. And here, uh, maybe by the localized regime, yeah. Yeah, Nicola, uh, in this experiment, the dimension of the system is comparable with the dimension that uh, you achieve numerically, is larger, is... Uh... No, here it's a, it is smaller. If I remember correctly here, I think they are like a, a few, maybe between 10 and 12, um, something like that. I see. Okay. So okay. yeah, technically in the nearest we are we have like larger uh, a bit larger systems. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But this cool. is an I think nowadays we can this this experiment are from almost five years ago, so yes. probably they can do better now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, uh, another interesting work came in 2016 by John Imbri who gave, uh, I think, the first mathematical and the unique mathematical proof for the existence of an MDL phase. Because maybe people are a bit uh, aware of the, li the recent literature now, it's a bit, um, so the, the, the very existence itself of the MDL phase is a bit uh, discussed now. Uh, but at least for this particular model, which is uh, not the Eisenberg, chain this is you see you have a Ising, a transverse field and longitudinal field and disorder in the three uh, for the three terms so Imbri could show that uh, at strong enough disorder of course uh, MBL is a thermodynamically uh, stable phase for for this type of of uh, Victoria. and then came uh, a few years ago now uh, I call this an analytical breakthrough because I think it really brings uh, a nice physical interpretation of the transition between MBL and localization. It is based on first an avalanche scenario and renormalization group approaches. And this is um, due to this first very, very, uh, I think important paper where uh, in a few words, what they show here, starting at strong disorder in the MBL regime uh, the, the main idea is because of the random configuration of disorder, you can always find, even in the MBL regime, very, very small region where the disorder is weaker than uh, the average disorder. And so this uh, very small ergodic grain, how they will behave when the global disorder is decreased and you approach the transition. And so the idea was to study this kind of ergodic region like the, the, the red one here, how they will proliferate, proliferate inside uh, um, an otherwise localized background. And so they found that there is a sort of a very dramatic transition. This is not a percolation transition. This is a, what they call an avalanche of ergodic grain, avalanche uh, transition. And there is a criterion that they found, which is when once the typical localization length becomes larger than, a, in fact, a small number, one over log two, which is here, this is this number is due to the to the mean level spacing in the many body uh, in the many body spectrum. This is due to the spin one half basically uh, degrees of freedom. But once this tip, the localization length uh, exceeds uh, this uh, threshold an avalanche transition towards delocalization is expected. And based on this, uh, this argument, 
this work then uh, tried to build a phenomenological renormalization group approach to better understand the transition. And what came out is that uh, the most probable uh, universality class for the transition seems to be a costly southwest transition. But this is something still, of course, under, under investigation by, uh, by other groups. Okay. Sorry, uh, yeah. can you remind us, um, let's say, in the many body context, uh, how you define the localization length? Because, you know, in the single particle is, is super clear. In the many body context, yeah, this is a very good question. And uh, yeah, I would say it depends on the model. So the most usual way would be, okay, let us look at the correlation functions, how the correlation, the connected correlation function, how they decay. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And this is also why we decided to go through the easing Majorana chain, because here you have um, maybe a more direct way to probe this length scale. I see. through the parity gap or the how the edge states how they are get localized through the mm -hmm. from the boundary but this is a, i think this is a very important point indeed how can we okay. really uh, probe this this length scale okay thanks so most of the system that were under studied were u1 symmetric models like the x x z or the the, the fermion the interacting fermion were the number of particles when i say u1 that means the total number of particles is constant um, so this is 99% of, of the numerical studies, basically. So that's why we, we decided to go to a different class of problem where the particle number is not conserved anymore. And this is the easy chains, okay? So this is, let's say, a standard, almost textbook model, the transverse field Ising model, okay? So we have like a coupling between spins at nearest neighbor and a, a field, and both quantity J, the coupling, and H, the field, could be, can be random. So again, let us invoke the jordan Wigner transformation here, such that this transverse field Ising model in one dimension maps onto a free fermion problem, okay? And here you see the free fermion is a slightly different from the Anderson model I discussed before, because you see that here you have terms like C dagger, C dagger, or CC, which means the total number of particles is not conserved. What is conserved is the parity, because you see either you, you create two or you destroy two, so that means the parity of the number of fermion is conserved, okay? And this is what we call Sorry, this. Uh, Nicola, uh, I think I have a naive question. Yeah. In principle, whenever you have uh, a, a quadratic Hamiltonian, you can always bring it to the, let's say, the canonical form, right, by a Bogoliubo transform. So what do you prevent here to modify your Jordan Wigner and go, so probably the issue is because you have open boundary conditions or something like that. To, in other words, what do you prevent to, to, to do another transformation and bring it to a canonical form? Oh, we could do that, yeah, yeah. This is something we are going to do. Ah, I see, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the moment, this is, yeah, this is a starting point for free fermions. So of course, yeah, this is, a, we can diagonalize it, of course, using, as you said, uh, simple. Okay, uh, okay, okay, I see, linear, I see, linear, okay. linear transformation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but here, yeah, okay, here I prefer to stay in the real space first, okay? So this is real space mm -hmm. I, okay? Uh, just to, to, to show that, the, yeah, there is this, this, um, let's say lower symmetry. So this is not the particle number which is conserved, okay? But this is the, the parity, okay? So you have only two sectors. And this is the so Z2 symmetry, okay? And this is the, the, this, uh, this parity operator P here, which can be plus or minus one. Uh, there is an interesting transformation also that can that is useful in this context and will be also useful later that you can, you can build new uh, easing uh, or poly matrices like this, tau z, tau x, such that the transverse field Ising writes like the original one. And, but the only difference is now the field is played by the coupling and the, and the, and the coupling is played by the field, okay? So the, this is what people call the duality transformation, which really gives some sort of symmetry in the phase diagram. I will come back to that uh, later. Of course, the interesting question now here, I will, I, I will discuss more in more details the free fermion case, but what is, what is important for our purpose is 
well, what will be the effect of interaction on this on this problem? And if you go to the literature, there are not so many uh, so many works as compared to the to the U1 uh, U1 symmetry case I previously discussed. So, of course, as I said, John Imbri, this is what he what he what he wanted to study, and so introducing on top of this uh, Ising uh, chain. Um, another field, a random field uh, in, the, in the x direction, okay? And if you look at this, now the z2 symmetry is lost because now you have terms like c dagger plus c. <clears throat> then preserving z2, we have these two works, one in the, uh, by Pecker and collaborator, and the other one by Kian and collaborator. And you see these are two different versions. One is on top of this sigma x, sigma x plus h, s sigma z, you add um, an interaction like this, sigma z, sigma z, which translate into a density, density interaction for the fermions. Or the other possibility is to, to put a second neighbor interaction like this, which apparently makes a quite more complicated uh, interaction in the fermionic language. And the other, let's say the last and the one we are going to follow possibility is to combine the two guys. And if you combine the two guys in this way, okay, sigma z, sigma z at first neighbor and sigma x, sigma x at second neighbor, you preserve z2 and also the duality transformation such that the phase diagram will have some, some symmetry. And I will come back to that later. And this has been, so this situation has been studied in these two, uh, these two works. Uh, Nicola, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, in in uh, this uh, uh, case one, which you list there, you, where you said that you uh, you break uh, the Z2 symmetry with this term, I didn't understand where is this term coming from? This doesn't look like an interaction term to me, or am I getting something wrong? Um, yeah, but in fact, if you really look at uh, in the Fermionic language, Huh? Okay, of course, this C dagger plus C, this is not interacting, but you have this string term here. Minus one to the number of fermion. Okay, the sum of them. So this is, a, in fact, this is in the interaction term because you can write that. Um, yeah, you can here, you see that this term, this is the, the Jordan Wigner string. Mm -hmm. And this bring interaction. Well, in, in, in a way, yeah, this is like having a, you can also probably write this down in terms of the product of the sigma z, okay? And so you have a long string, a product from sigma one, sigma two, sigma z up to the site i, or i minus one. And so this is a, yeah, this is an interaction. Okay, thank you. But I agree, this is the most natural one. Okay. Um, so before going into this interacting problem, let us start with a sim simpler, non-interacting transverse field Ising chain model. Okay. So I say this is Ising, of course, Jordan Wigner fermions, and also Majorana fermions. Why that? So first, again, I write down the Jordan Wigner transformation, okay, which maps the transverse field Ising model to this uh, in real space non-interacting fermions. And we can diagonalize it, having new operator. Here I call them phi, dagger and phi. And this is this uh, this is the, the diagonal formulation. So from that, you can compute basically everything, spectrum, correlation, <coughs> entanglement. Um, so most of the physical properties are, are easily, uh, easily accessible. What is interesting, and this is, I think, the, the very uh, powerful observation made by Kitaev, and then uh, probably very more, yeah, well explained by Paul Finley in this paper in 2012, that if you take open boundary conditions on this, uh, this easing chain and uh, introducing two Majorana fermions, okay, so two fermions A and B, like this, which are sometimes we can call them real fermions as opposed to complex fermions. So this is in my, this uh, transophilizing model uh, writes, reads like this. Okay, so you have a sum between B and A. And what you see here, you see that when the field H is, let's say for a moment, small enough. Okay, so you see this is the, the, the 
the picture of the of the model with the a b a b a b the a1 and the bl uh, Majorana at the two boundaries um, is less uh, coupled to the rest of the chain. In the extreme limit of H1 equal HL equals zero, of course, this is an exact uh, decoupling of the two guys at the boundaries. But what can be shown in particular by building the so-called zero mode operators is that uh, provided the product of the field by the coupling J remain less than one. Okay, so we are on, a, let's say, one phase of the, of the model, which is the so-called ordered phase. We can construct zero modes operator, one on the left invoking A fermions, and one on the right invoking B. And these uh, zero modes are exponentially localized from the boundary, and they uh, respect the three conditions of being a strong zero modes. First of all, they commute at the thermodynamic limit with the Hamiltonian. Uh, we can build out of the two, the left and the right, a direct, a direct fermion creation operator, which creates a zero mode, which will be uh, exponentially bilocalized at the two boundaries. And on top of that, uh, this creation or dagger anti-commutes with the, the parity operator. And this has a strong consequence on uh, the many body spectrum. And this is what I wrote here. That means this O dagger will map even to odd sector. And so the odd and the even sector, provided this green condition is satisfied, there will be uh, they will be uh, degenerate at the thermodynamic limit. Okay, so all this uh, can be can be understood as a sort of topological order because you have uh, exponentially localized edge state and you have this uh, this uh, parity degeneracy between even and odd centers. So let me let me make let me be a bit more more precise now. Uh, with the numerical results on this uh, on this on this model. So first, in the clean limit, so without disorder, without disorder. So this is the simple uh, this Hamiltonian with J and H being constant. So as a function of this control parameter delta, which is the ratio, the log of the ratio between J and H. So we have two phase. One is what I call the topological order of ferromagnetic, and the other one is the paramagnet. Here I show the energy levels as a function of this control parameter. And so you see that there is a, so the two phases are gapped in the bulk, but in this regime when delta is, uh, is positive, okay? So delta positive, this is precisely my green condition I, I showed before, okay? Here, okay? So this is the general case when there is disorder, but this is also true when there is uh, in the clean case. So this is uh, here, this phase. And so here you see that um, we have this zero mode state, which has as a function of system size, which is exponentially decaying here. And here this exponential decay of the parity gap. So this is this parity gap is uh, here exponentially, uh, exponentially small in the system size. So, here below, I show the many body spectrum in the three cases, in the ordered phase, critical point, and in the trivial phase. So you see that in the ordered phase, indeed, the spectrum between even and odd parity sector is, uh, appears to be almost perfectly degenerate. In fact, this is not exactly degenerate. There is a small splitting, which is exponentially small, and this is what is uh, what is written here. Okay, so we have this exponentially small uh, parity gap. At criticality, you have lost this, uh, this degeneracy and of course in the trivial phase also. So this topological order can be also uh, probed using um, the zero mode operator. So the one that in the, in the clean case takes this quite simple form like this. 
And so numerically, we can also compute the overlap between an even eigenstate, then you create, uh, you, 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 you act this zero mode creation on the even eigenstate, and you sandwich that with a, a correspond, the corresponding odd uh, partner. And that uh, defines the topological order parameter. And you see as a functional system side that there is a, like a beautiful uh, step function. This is one at the thermodynamic limit here on the topological phase, and this is zero here, okay? So, Sorry, how you define how you define the odd uh, counterpart in the uh, let's say non non symmetric case? I mean, in the in the what is delta smaller than zero case? Uh, because there you don't have any. I mean, I understand that you define the counterpart because you have an operator that map, let's say, uh, even in odd and so on. But when you don't have such an operator, how you define? Ah, yes, I agree, but. This is, on, of course, if you, at the thermodynamic limit, this, uh, this zero mode operator in the, in the left part of the phase diagram is not defined anymore because this is not normalizable. You cannot normalize it. But on finite mm -hmm. system, on finite system, you can always define it. Even, even of course, the, the, the problem is the norm will diverge at the thermodynamic limit, but mm -hmm. on finite system, you can still define it, yeah. Yeah, you can compute it. Uh, yeah. but, but I agree with you with your remark, yeah. Of course, uh, formally, uh, at infinite system size, this is not defined. But yeah, on finite, you can always, uh, yeah, provided the numerical. No, but sorry, no, uh, I think I was asking uh, a more trivial question. I mean, I have, in, uh, I mean, in, uh, in this, let's say, I have an even state, then I act with the zero mode uh, operator, right? And I want to sandwich with an odd or odd state. Now, what is the, the odd state that I choose? I mean, I understand when delta is larger than zero, I understand that I have the counterpart, right? I mean, the, the states are a uh, coming pair, one even and one odd. But when delta, in other words, how I identify the odd state to, to finish? Well, in fact, well, okay, this is a bit, uh, bit detailed, but uh, in fact, this is how this zero mode in the single particle picture, is it occupied or not? I see. So the difference between these two guys is simply is this a single, because of course here I'm talking about many body, okay? So many, right. many, I can say. And then the difference between the even and the odd partners is just about the occupation or not of this, uh, this, the, the, this, the, the first one. And okay, of course here, this is of course the zero mode, but then I can also follow he, it here. Okay? Hmm. This is, uh, this is the, the first, um, this is the first, um, the first level here what I call epsilon I one see. here, okay? So either okay. I feel it or not. I see, okay. So in, in the numerics, okay. this is pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, uh, this is simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Good. Uh, so as I said, we can compute most of the thing, for example, the entanglement entropy also can be, can be computed. And this also, it's an interesting quantity here in the clean case and the ground states, uh, cutting the system into, um, two halves like this, at L over two in the middle, you see that the entanglement entropy has a maximum at the critical point, okay? And then there is two interesting area laws. In the topological regime, the area law goes to log two, and this is a signature of what we can call the cat state in the spin language, okay? So ground state, and in fact, all excited state are this form of cat states. Uh, and while here in this, uh, the trivial regime, we have an area law with a very a much smaller entanglement entropy. At the critical point, uh, we have the, the, the conformal field theory, uh, which tells us that entanglement entropy will grow uh, logarithmically following uh, this law, the Calabres and Cardi uh, behavior. Uh, growing slowly, uh, uh, like a logarithmic, logar 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 okay? So let us now jump to the dissolved case, first without interaction. So the dissolved case is uh, by itself a very, very interesting topic, and it has been uh, almost completely worked out by Daniel Fisher during the 90s. And this is the zero temperature phase diagram <coughs> that he, he proposed. So. Again, we have two phases, a, diesel, a paramagnet and the ordered phase, and there's a critical point in between. 
So this is for in the speed language. So now again, yeah, the, the, the control parameter, this is delta. This is now the log of J average over disorder minus log of H average over disorder, okay? Um, what is different from the, the clean case? Uh, important difference is in the clean case, we have two gap phase here in the zero mode on top of the, the gap phase here. In the disordered case, there is, it's always gap place close to the critical point. Okay, so there's no gap closing here. Uh, if we look in the Fermanic language, this is Anderson localized in both phases. Topologically speaking, this is topological order here and trivial here. And the critical point separating the two is what is uh, called infinite randomness critical point, which has very, um, very peculiar features, like uh, for, for instance, uh, average and typical correlations, they behave very differently. One is a power law decaying, the other one is a stretch exponential. And in the Fermanic language, this critical point is not complete, is not Anderson localized in uh, the usual sense. This is what people call marginally localized because a few states, most of the state they are finite localization lengths, but a few states, they have a diverging localization lengths, but diverging very slowly with the energy. So this is a very particular point where this is not, <coughs> this is not the, the regular Anderson, Anderson localization. Okay. So this is the zero temperature diagram. So now the question is what is first going on at, at high energy? So does this picture remain at high energy? And this is something I will first explain before going into the, the interacting case. So we are going to address the magnetic properties, the entanglement, topological order, and uh, maybe the most important one is the many body spectroscopy, which will be uh, crucial to understand the interacting case. So first of all, the magnetic order. Okay, we can say there are different ways to probe the magnetic order in the spin language from our, our chain. One is, would be, let us look, because of course we have open boundary conditions. So if we want to avoid the boundary effect, we can just uh, call C bulk being the correlator at L over four, three L over four, like this. And when you scale up your system, of course the boundary effect will be less and less less uh, less uh, visible. Another possibility is also to probe directly the edge correlator, the end to end correlation, like this. But interestingly, this edge edge, if now we rewrite the problem in terms of Majorana's, this is really the Majorana edge uh, correlation A one B L. So that's interesting. So this correlator probe the Majorana the Majorana edge modes. So let us look at how it gives, what it gives. So these two quantities, the bulk and the edge. So I show here clean case on the left and random case on the right, first for ground state. So in the ground state, you see the two phases, uh, disordered, ordered, and there's basically almost no difference between the two, okay? At, uh, at zero temperature. You have the bulk and the edge, the bulk and the edge, which are give the finite order parameter in the in the in the <clears throat> in the ordered case. Now the interesting result come when you when you go to infinite temperature. So this is the top panel at infinite temperature. So again, clean random. So what do, what do we have? First of all, on the left, you see that. Of course, at infinite temperature, we don't expect long range order, okay? In the clean case. Uh, and this is what we observe. There is no finite temperature long range order. So the C bulk is, is basically zero. Why? The topological signature is still valid across all the many body spectrum. In fact. So you see that this, the edge correlator is finite. So this is the situation in the clean case. While in the random case, this is even maybe more interesting because we have this nice result first uh, discussed by, uh, by Fisher, oh, sorry, by Hughes and collaborator in this work, that disorder, the presence of disorder will protect the magnetic order at all energies. And you see the picture of the ground state, C bulk, C edge, remain qualitatively similar in the random case. So 
as in the clean case, the edge molds they still exist. So you have the C edge, but there is also a magnetic long range order at finite temperature in the random case. And this is because of the, of the, of the localization of the, of the excitation, in fact. Okay, so already we have something which is quite, uh, quite uh, amusing uh, in the non-interacting case. Uh, we can continue with other quantities like the half chain entanglement entropy, as we discussed before. And here, the phenomenology is basically the same as in the, as in the clean case for the ground state. For the ground state, you have this, this picture. So different, are different system size going to the going up. So we have the cat state signature here, and we have this uh, area low here. And in fact, this is similar at infinite temperature. Infinite temperature, this is the red curves, and you have something which is pretty similar. And if you look at the critical point, the infinite randomness critical point, okay, we have, um, so this is a result first uh, derived by Raphael and Moore, that at the critical point, this random, this um, transverse fieldizing chain model in the presence of disorder has also a logarithmic scaling of the entanglement entropy. Okay, so this is the blue symbols here. And at infinite temperature, we found that this is also similar. There is just an offset different in the constant, but it's the same uh, prefactor of the log uh, of the log scaling for the entanglement entropy. So the topological order, as we discussed previously, can also be uh, probed here. And again, we find the same, uh, the same result that we have something which will scale down to zero in the trivial phase and also jump to one here. But it's a bit smoother as compared to the clean case, but we have something which is qualitatively similar. Okay, so now we come to the, to the new thing, new part, which is about the Mandy body spectroscopy. So what we want to do, we start from the non-interacting problem, okay? Non-interacting problem, so we have L single particle levels. And out of that, we can build two to the L many body levels by filling up this, uh, this single particle levels, okay? And you can do that, and you can also make a difference between even and odd parity. And this is the picture that so we already saw that as a function of energy. So here I put it that at energy density, so between zero and one, okay? Uh, so this is all what we are going to, uh, to study now. So something we are going to do to probe this, uh, if uh, we can observe the parity, uh, the parity degeneracy, okay? The idea would be, and this has been, uh, I think uh, first studied by uh, Romain Vasseur in a paper in 2016, that if you mix uh, even and odd uh, sectors, okay? And then you probe the, low, the, 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 the level statistics with this a bit modified gap ratio R prime. So the gap ratio, I recall what it is, this is, you take th um, three levels, three adjacent levels, and then you look at what is the minimum. So you have three levels. So that means you have two gaps, delta, delta prime, okay? Of course, one is bigger than the other. And so you build the minimum divided by the maximum. So this is a quantity which is in between zero and one. And so you can do that in each sector, or you can, as I propose to do here, you can mix even and odd sectors. So if you do that, you have two possibilities for this R prime, either the parity gap is much smaller than the natural level spacing, okay? So the parity gap will be like exponential of minus L by Xi, and the natural level spacing in the many body spectrum is basically exponential of minus L multiplied by the entropy density. At infinite temperature, this number S will be log two. So basically this R prime, so this ratio will probe the ratio between the parity gap and the many body level, level spacing in this situation. Otherwise, if the parity gap is larger, we come back to the more regular Poisson statistics of uh, non-correlated levels, okay? 
So this is something we expect. So either this parity gap will go, sorry, this gap ratio will go to zero or it will go to Poisson value. And this is something we have checked very nicely. So here, these are exact diagonalization results. And you see first, if any temperature case as a function of delta. So here you see this R prime clearly going to zero. So that means here uh, we can resolve this parity degeneracy as compared to the many body uh, level spacing. And when you approach the critical point, there is a transition. And the transition, the spectral transition occurs not at the critical point, which is at zero. It occurs inside the topological region. So this is the global... Sorry, that, uh, yes. Sorry, just, just to be sure that I'm following. Here you are taking, let's say, the many body levels, but you are still working in absence of interactions. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I am introducing, oh. exactly, yeah, yeah. I am introducing okay. this, uh, this uh, technique for the okay, non-interacting okay. case. And I will then I will use that in the in the interaction. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah, of course, you, you see the, the system size. So here we can, without any difficulty, build up to probably L equal uh, 30. So here I showed like uh, up to 26, but we can go to 30. Uh, this is not a, okay, because the diagonalization is very simple. This is here, but then when you have to, to reconstruct all the many body levels, it takes some. <clears throat> It has some, of course, numer some numerical, uh, numerical issues also. So what we observe as a function of energy, okay, because energy means different entropy density, that the spectral transition can occur at a different value of delta. And here, this is the diagram we get, energy density uh, delta. And here I, could, I should probably draw a vertical line here. So here on the left of the line, this is, uh, let's say, the, the trivial phase, the trivial phase, and the topological phase is on the, on, the, on the right. But so inside the topological phase, I have a spectral transition between a paired spectrum and an unpaired spectrum. Okay, so this is a, a curiosity, I would say, an interesting effect that inside the topological regime, there is like a, a pair to unpair transition in the many body spectrum. Okay, good. So, so let me, before going to the interacting case, summarize a bit what, what I said. So uh, in our results, so this is the, the diagram we have. So as a function of delta, we have the trivial paramagnet, the topological that we can also call spin glass order because here I wrote an infinite temperature. So at infinite temperature, it's not anymore for the spin, a ferromagnetic order. It can be anything, okay? So this is why I, I call that a spin glass order. And inside this topological spin glass order, there is a spectral pairing transition here. So here, this is for infinite temperature. But of course, when you change the energy density, this delta star can move slowly to the, to the left. Okay, so now the important question is what is what will be the effect of interaction on this uh, very already quite rich diagram in the absence of interaction. Uh, so we decide to put this Z2 and duality preserving uh, um, interaction term. And this has been already uh, slightly studied. Uh, yeah, okay, so before that, let me show you what on general ground, what we would expect. So we expect something which should be uh, symmetric, okay, so, uh, with respect to the, to the critical point. With now the trivial paramagnet becoming an MBL paramagnet, the spin glass order topological becoming an MBL spin glass. Uh, and, probably a delocalized ergodic regime induced by the interaction here in the middle, but where exactly we don't really know. So this has been, uh, this has been first addressed by in the group of Norman Yao a year ago. And this is, this is the general picture they have here. Uh, but okay, they only have a few points and they didn't really study the critical properties here. But they still they have three phases: MBL paramagnet, an ergodic in between, and the MBL spin glass. Uh, but it did, didn't really address this kind of question. What are this? There's some signature of topological order here. What about the spectral pairing in this phase? Does it exist or not? And what about 
the fate of the infinite randomness fixed point here, which exists in the absence of interaction, how it behaves when you put interaction. So this, all these questions, we are going to address them and I give you already <clears throat> the answer. So this is something we, we addressed in this paper with uh, Gabriel and Nicola. And so this is the file diagram. So I, I will give detail later, but this is the diagram we found, okay, here. So the three phases, we got them, but we addressed different questions. So we found signature of topological order here through the N to N correlator. We found that all these phases associated with the spectral pairing always, and we also found that the infinite randomness fixed point is immediately unstable against uh, interaction. And more than that, we found that there is an opening of this phase here. So I will, I will give details uh, now about that. So um, how much time do I have? Okay, not so much. Uh, 10 minutes. Okay, good, perfect. Uh, th that's perfect. So now, okay, this is an interacting problem. So this is the Hamiltonian, okay? So eating chain and the interaction here. So here, basically, the, the maximum system size we can do using shift invert organization is about, uh, is less than 20. It's a bit uh, less than for the X, X, Z chain because the Hilbert space is larger. And so the first example I will going to show using classic estimates, this is a, a cut in the phase diagram along this line, okay? Just to, to fix the ideas. So going through the three uh, three different phases. So to do that, we use half chain entanglement entropy on the top and the gap ratio. So now the gap ratio is, <clears throat> I'm not mixing the two sec parity sectors. I will do that later. Now I will, I, I'm focusing on each parity sector separately. So let us start maybe with the gap ratio. So here we see a clear uh, transition between the Poisson statistics in the two MBL regimes, okay? And in the ergodic phase, the green one, the gap ratio goes to the GOE value, which is uh, this, uh, this now. Okay, so this is clear. But from the gap ratio only, you don't really understand that there are two different MBL phases because this is Poisson and Poisson. While if you go to the, if you use the entanglement, action entanglement entropy, we have a real low, a real low, but with different uh, values. And uh, clearly here you see that the real low this is going to, uh, to zero rapidly, and here it saturates to log two. So this is a signature of the cat state that we already discussed. In the, uh, but here we are not along this G equals zero line. We are very uh, high here, finite interaction. And in between- and, sorry, yeah. you, are, you are doing this at, uh, at infinite temperature, zero temperature? Sorry, yeah, yeah, no, no, this is infinite temperature, of course, because okay. zero, for zero temperature, we could use a ground state algorithm, of course, like a DMRG. Okay, would be much good, more good, good, good. Yeah, of course, of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and okay, in between, we have this nice volume law entanglement entropy, which is exemplified here. And you see this as a function of system size, it grows with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the volume, basically. Okay. So this is a good effect. Okay, so, but these are two classic, uh, two classic estimate and entanglement entropy spectral statistics for this, uh, for this transition. Let us now go maybe to this uh, more interesting quantity, which is the, the many body spectral pairing. So to address the many body spectral pairing, we are going to work in this phase, okay, the MBL spin glass phase at a given value of delta, 2.5 here, okay? And we are going to scan here the interaction G. Okay, so what do we expect? So either, as I said before, we compute the gap ratio, I call resolved, uh, because here that means if I, if I stay in a given parity sector. So the resolved gap ratio, we have two possible values, GOE 0 0.53, as I showed before here in this green region, or the Poisson behavior, which is valid here as, and also here. But here we are going to work here, okay? So if I stay with the gap, with this parity resolve gap ratio, I cannot learn so much. So now mixing the two parity sectors, now we have a bit more structure which emerges. So first of all, in the ergodic regime, because I am mixing two parity, two, um, two blocks basically, okay? 
two blocks, which are uh, two GOE blocks. Uh, this is what we can call GOE square. For the GOE square, we have this number, which has been worked out uh, recently by good friends. So this is four, two, three, four. Okay, so we expect a different value as the GOE, because of course we have now two GOE blocks in the urban equation. A regular MBL would give also Poisson, and the MBL plus per spectrum would give something which is going to zero, as we saw already uh, in the non-interacting case. Okay, so this R prime is uh, expected to be uh, to have to, to 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 get to retain more or more information. Sorry to compare to your slide uh, here. Uh, I mean, before you were a bit sloppy and you were, let's say, merging the GOE GOE square and the MBL and the Poisson value, right? Instead, here you are making a, a more precise. Uh, in in the original one, you were saying, okay, either zero or something close to the Poisson value. Here, instead, you are making a more precise distinction between the true Poisson value and the GOE square. Am I right? Uh, well, when you say before, you mean in the non-interactive case? When you introduced this, uh, this R mixed, I think yes. you were distinct. Yes, but R. yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a good point. In the non-interacting case, uh, it will never be GOE because, uh, because this is integrable. Ah, so, because it's integrable. Okay, yes. And because okay. this is integrable, we are either Poisson right. or zero. Okay, this okay. Good, good, good. And in the free fermion case, uh, the R resolve is uh, completely useless because it's, it will always be Poisson because correct, this is correct. always, you, you know what I mean? Okay. So here in okay. the interacting case, we have another situation, which is a GOE, which is ergodicity. And here mm -hmm. with this R prime, we have, we have three, three different possibilities. So okay. I show on the top of the panel as a function of interaction stress. So again, I recall, so I am making a scan, a vertical scan here. Okay. So probing the MBL spin glass towards ergodicity. So if first you look at the R ratio, so the regular one, we go from Poisson to GOE. And here, this is a zoom of that. So this is the Poisson and okay, so this is a zoom of the crossing, okay? But you see that the, 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 here uh, um, in, the, in the ergodic regime, it will saturate to 0 0.53. Good. But now, interestingly, you go to our prime and here you see like much more dynamics. So here, this is clearly zero in the, in the MBL spin glass, okay? Which is a signature of the, of the, of the pairing. There is a crossing, and this crossing, if you go now again here, this is a zoom of this region. The crossing appears roughly in the same region, okay? Uh, and then it goes to GOE squared. And there is no intermediate Poisson plateau, okay? Which would be the case if we go from MBL plus per spectrum, then regular MBL, then ergodic. So it's direct transition from MBL per spectrum to ergodic. Okay. And following Yes. Is it, is it to discriminate uh, numerically between these two values? I mean, did you try to, let's say, benchmark this against uh, a case in which you would see the transition? Well, here, okay, of course, as you say, maybe you, this 0.423 is close to Poisson value, which uh, is yeah. 0.38. But here, well, this is clearly going to, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I don't think. And there are also other, um, there are other uh, indications for the mm -hmm. single transition like this. For example, okay. if you look at either the end-to-end -end correlator or the von Neumann entropy, they also show a transition between something which is MBL towards something which is delocalized or ergodic at the same point. So okay. the conclusion of that is the, taking different estimates, we have a single, a single transition. So that means MBL spin glass seems to be always associated with the spectral pairing, which was a question at the beginning. Eh? Okay. So what does it mean? So if you look at the numbers, so we know that, uh, so if MBL is always associated with spectral pairing, that means our parity gap, okay, is the, always the smallest number as compared to the natural gap, would be at infinite temperature smaller than the, 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 the living spacing, okay? 
So this means that the typical localization length has to be less than one over log two. And this reminds us the avalanche return, which, which told us that the transition should occur only once the typical localization length will exceed this one over log two. Okay. So what are the consequences for now the weekly interacting regime? Okay, so in the weekly interacting regime, so now I come back here, uh, for example, in this region. So at g equals zero, we know that the localization length in the absence of interaction is going like one over delta. So this is a standard and very well uh, documented result. So that tells us that indeed, if delta is less than uh, the delta star, this uh, spectral pairing delta star that we already discussed in my interacting case, which here is log two, uh, we expect the length to be in this regime. So the regime where the avalanche should immediately occur as soon as you put interaction. And this is indeed what we observe. So this uh, entanglement entropy and the regular gap ratio as a function now, so this is a vertical scan as a function of G for uh, delta equals zero. Okay, so here. And so what we observe, okay, we observe a crossing of the entanglement entropy divided by the system size. We also observe a crossing of the gap ratio. But if you, if you look a bit more closely here, you see that the crossing point is drifting to the left. Of course, we have a limited system size. so. We do our best here, but the crossing is clear. And this is a, there is a crossing for the two quantities. And here in the inset, I show how the crossing point behaves as a function of one over the system size. And the drift is clearly going to zero. And this is also something which has been observed by uh, Hughes and Kemani in this work. So that means ultimately at the thermodynamic limit, the transition point will be pushed to G equals zero. But if now you move a bit to the right, let's say to delta equals 0 0.5 here, the, exactly the same phenomenology is observed. There is almost no difference between delta equals 0 and delta equals 0 0.5. And at delta equals 0 0.5, the non-interacting localization length is equal, equals 2. So we are again above the avalanche return. And so we have exactly the same, the same, uh, the same drift towards 0. But now if I go to delta equals one here, it seems that the drift is stopping. Okay, so again, we have some uncertainty here, but it seems that there is now a finite value of the, of the, of the critical point. So this brings me maybe to the, to the conclusion that as we show, we have two topologically distinct MBL phase. Okay, one is MBL spin glass, the one we uh, mostly. And we found that this MBL phase is always associated to spectral pairing, okay? And completely different from the featureless MBL paramagnet. By the way, this MBL paramagnetic phase, the orange phase, is pretty similar to the MBL phase of the Heisenberg chain in a random field. So this one has more, uh, is richer. So because that's an edge state topological feature and the spectral pair. In between, there is a broad orbit phase. And one, maybe the, the most important result here is the spectral pairing transition that we found has exactly the same condition as the avalanche criteria. And so we, we tend to conclude that uh, there is a single transition. Maybe the, here I show sort of the green region that is not completely ruled out because of course we have finite, finite uh, size numerics. So it is difficult to completely rule out uh, another scenario, but the scenario having MBL spin glass plus spectral pairing, then MBL spin glass without spectral pairing as an intermediate phase before getting to the ergodic regime, this scenario is, uh, is, the, is not very, is not highly probable. And so this is maybe here I put a, a, a draw a sketch of, the, the, of the, the, the most probable scenario, okay? And uh, because this uh, criterion, this avalanche criterion helps us also to understand that there is certainly an opening here. So 
the infinite randomness physics is, is opening because the localization length of the, in the, in the non-interacting case is too large, such that uh, the interaction effect will immediately drive the system towards uh, an ergodic region. And as a final word, this delta star is, depends on the, where we are in the spectrum. So here, most of the ED study I, sh uh, I discussed were for infinite temperature, okay? So high in the spectrum here, where the entropy density is maximum, log two. But we can we could also think that at smaller energy, okay, uh, where the entropy is smaller, we could have like a delta star which is moving, okay? Moving to the to, to inside here. But so that, that could be an interesting study to, uh, to make to, to, to really, uh, to, to probe this, uh, this scenario. Okay, so I think I'm done. I'm sorry to, to be too long, but uh, uh, so that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor La Florency, uh, for this very uh, interesting talk. Let us thank our speaker. Thank you, thank and... you. <laughs> it's like Champions League, yeah? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, we are open for questions. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, question? Uh, the, once you mapped the problem onto a one-dimensional quantum model, uh, in principle, you can map that to a classical model in two dimensions. Mm. Uh, how does that classical model look like? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so of course, for the non-interacting case, the transfidizing chain mapping to, yeah, this is a classical easing model in two dimension, which is well known with a critical exponent and so on. Then when you add interactions, uh, what does it bring? Hmm. You, you still have exchange-like interactions and field-like interactions. Yes. So in principle, I thought that uh, exchange remains exchange in two dimensions and the field somehow becomes interactions in the other direction, in the, in the quantum direction. Yeah, but don't, don't you think that maybe it could be a, a longer range? Because yeah, that's a good... Um, yeah, that's a good uh, idea. I, I, I never thought about how this will uh, write in, in classically. But yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is a nice formulation of that in terms of Majorana, in fact. Because in terms of Majorana, this, this, the fully interacting Hamiltonian takes the, the, the very close form. And there is a very good paper uh, in the group of Ian Affleck in 2016, where they, they, they basically worked out the ground state of the Majorana problem without disorder and at zero temperature. Uh, and there, maybe they have some sort of classical, 2D classical uh, uh, interpretation. I should, I should take a look better. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a precise. Uh, In any case, the random case is not a trivial two-dimensional model because the randomness is only in one direction in, the, in that two-dimensional mapping. Exactly, and this is so, correlated so in the an uh, random model, but uh, yeah. still, yeah, 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 and this is correlated in the in the let's say the, the correlated in the quantum direction, yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm, maybe I can. Uh, I mean, if I understood correctly, essentially you are. Uh, I mean. If I understood correctly, let's say the spectral pairing trans, uh, let's say the spectral pairing transition is in agreement with the avalanche criterion. While instead, if I were doing just let's say the R ratios, they wouldn't be. I mean, they, 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 they wouldn't be in agreement with the avalanche criterion. So, if you uh, if you remember, I mean, there is a recent paper 
quite recent by David Lewitz and others in which they essentially they argue that uh, the true MBL phase in the thermodynamic limit will appear only at the avalanche point, while instead the other, let's say, finite sites analysis will drift up to reach the avalanche point, right? So I was wondering if uh, you can figure out a similar uh, an analogous of the spectrum pairing transition in the MBL paramagnetic phase, uh, which will be in agreement with the avalanche criterion, and that could be useful in order to, let's say, since you yeah. say that the MBL paramagnetic phase is similar to the Heisenberg point, we yeah. could say, okay, that may be the right observable to consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something we we, we, we did in the paper. So um, we can write. So here, in this, um, in the MBL paramagnet, mm -hmm. where, okay, we don't have the equivalent of the pairing gap. So the pairing right. gap is here. So this pairing gap is a good quantity to probe uh, the, the, the length scale. Mm -hmm. And here, okay, there is not such quantity, but um, what we, we use, we use the end-to-end. The, the -end, so this is again open chain. So the end-to-end -end correlation, okay, sigma right. one x, sigma lx, this mm -hmm. one, okay, so either you average it or you take the typical, okay, but uh, mm -hmm. this, this is uh, exponentially decaying. Sure, okay. And this, and this length scale, in fact, we found a very good agreement. Okay, we didn't do that for all points, but for a few points, we found that indeed the transition here from MBL paramagnet to ergodic matched very well the criterion disk psi here equals mm -hmm. roughly one over log two. So, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm a bit curious why, okay, even myself, because I did a few studies on the Heisenberg chain in random field, right. but we never really focused on the on the correlation functions uh, while we should, <laughs> I think. We yeah, should. yeah, exactly, because uh, somehow you suggest that <laughs> these are in better agreement with, <laughs> let's say, with, the, with the thermodynamic limit <laughs> than the standard one. So in principle, one could benchmark uh, yeah, and the good thing also is if you see this number one over log two, this is extremely small. This is one point four. Right. So th this is a small number, and so people who tend to say oh, we can never conclude about MBL because uh, we are very we are very 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 far from the thermodynamic limit. I, I agree, we are far from the thermodynamic limit. But if um, the typical the relevant length scale is close to unity, this is already a good point. For me, right. you know what I mean? Uh, because yeah. here at the MBL transition, the typical localization length is not diverging. This is constant. This, okay. this is precisely this number, psi star, this avalanche, uh, avalanche mm -hmm. uh, length. So that's why uh, I think I think that numerics, uh, small system psi numerics are still um, meaningful. Because you say that the relevant length is much smaller than the system sites that you probe. I mean, they are uh, over yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this exponential decay, you can really see it. I mean, uh, you can see that here, right. exponential decay. Uh, and uh, yeah, but in, in our paper, uh, I forgot this was this on archive in January, we, we show a plot with this length scale in the MBL paramagnet across the transition. So if you mm -hmm. want to see you, you can take a look. Okay. And this is this agrees also well with this one over log two. So that's um, that's a good mm -hmm. uh, a good sign. I see. But okay, yeah. To define this, because here you are doing one L. So, I mean, here is the, the fact that you are in open boundary condition and you have the edge modes probably is really crucial, right? To define this observable, I think. Or let's say to say that this observable is the right one. Which one you mean? The the end to end uh, correlation. I mean, yes. Uh, okay. The fact that but here in in the in the in the um, in the MBL paramagnet, there is no any more edge mode. So ah right right. But because when you have open chain, of course, yeah, this is the maximum uh, separation right. you can have, which is not that. But because if you have closed chain, this is only L over two. Right. So I think. Numerically speaking, uh, probing edge correlation, end-to-end -end correlation, even though there is no edge or topological order, which is the case right. here, 
this is also better because you can make a Agreed. finite size scaling a bit uh, a bit uh, wider, let's say, from uh, yeah, yeah, eight right. side up to sixteen. So you can have a, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. You gain a factor of two for free, essentially, which is exactly exactly. Okay, do we have any other questions from the audience? It seems not. So in this case, uh, let us thank uh, Professor La Florency again. And yes. with this- Merci beaucoup. <laughs> thank you very much. And with this, 